Fast internet. It's the thing that everybody wants. But if you've watched any of the short circuits here with me, your boy Jake, Sometimes it's not the easiest thing ever getting fast Wi-Fi and today thanks to Asus who sponsored this video for us to check out their Asus Zen Wi-Fi BT10 mesh Wi-Fi system We're gonna see just how easy it can be to set up a super fast Wi-Fi 7 mesh network in well not a house. It kind of looks like a house, but this is a warehouse, I promise you. And they also have a whole lineup of other products if this particular one doesn't suit your fancy, but let's open the box and check it out. So looking at the front of this thing, I can definitely tell already that there's there's two in here. But you can also buy these things in a pack of one, a pack of three. We've got our two box doohickey things in there. Power brick, cool. And one ethernet cable. Nice. Now for the uninitiated, if you're not familiar with Wi-Fi meshing, the idea is, well, a lot of houses don't have hardwired internet, and uh, even if they do, it's not always in the place that you need good Wi-Fi. So the way that this setup is supposed to work, you take your main box, you plug it in at your ISP's fiber box or cable modem, or maybe into your ISP's existing router if you want, and then the second unit, or third unit, or maybe even more units, go elsewhere in your house, your apartment, your small business, whatever, and then these two connect to each other wirelessly, and then this is rebroadcasted. So they'll make a really high-speed connection between each other as a fast kind of backhaul highway between each unit wirelessly, and then this is retransmitting to your other devices in the other place where you might not have signal. And this allows you to set up your house or other in a way where you have excellent coverage everywhere without having to run wires or having to have wires. It's um, it's not a new concept, but it is a very powerful one uh, if you don't have that existing infrastructure. Now, let's take a look at the individual unit here. They look to be exactly the same. I've seen some of these mesh Wi-Fi setups before where they have different pieces. So they'll have like a main unit that's like beefier and has all of the ports on it. And then they have the kind of substation mesh units that don't have anything other than power. But these ones are virtually identical. Let's just take a look at one. We've got a USB 3.0 type A port, which you can use for say network storage if you wanna to connect to an external hard drive or for USB tethering. If you have an internet outage, you can connect your phone and then rebroadcast your phone cellular connection to all of your devices as like a backup link. We've got a one gig RJ45 and then two 10 gig RJ45, so which is a nice touch. That means you could, if you have like a 2.5 gig internet connection, a five gig internet connection, a 10 gig internet connection, you can hook it up here and then you still get a full speed output. And the other nice thing is, the other unit also has those same ports. So if you're bridging wirelessly and you've got you know, a two gig wireless link or something between these two connections, you can still take advantage of it on the other remote meshed side. Then we've got a power input and then a little power switch. Switchy. We've got a reset button in case you screw up. And it's nice, look at that. It's not like one of those stupid recessed holes you have to like hold a pin in and then if you don't have a pin you're screwed. No, it's just a recessed button that you have to hold. So you don't need any special tools to screw around with that, which is very nice. And then there's a WPS Wi-Fi protected setup button. I would not recommend using that for security reasons, but if you really want to, it's there. Now speaking of power brick, what kind of power brick is this? It's a 12 volt, three amp. So max of 36 watts. Now, there's a sticker on one of these. Does that mean I need to use that one? Hi, I'm the main unit. Start with me. Okay, cool. Hey, this little light is green. Let's give it um, internet. Worky. Now it's strobing. Okay, I guess I need the app. Got the Asus router Wi-Fi app downloaded here. Let's check it out. Asus Zen Wi-Fi series. Make sure you've connected the modem to your router's WAN port, which I have done. Set up a local password, admin. I like that it makes you set up an admin account for your router locally, because a lot of them just default to like whatever thing is printed on the bottom. Some of them I've even seen still to this day default to password as the password, which is so bad. Oh, it even makes an IoT network. That's so smart. See, one of the things with new Wi-Fi technology is that it's 
not always compatible with older stuff. And actually what the router just did is made an IOT network at the same time, which is a completely separate thing. It'll show up in your list, speedyboy underscore IOT, that you can use for devices that don't work on the main network because their Wi-Fi chipset or drivers or whatever it might be so old that they don't support it. Uh, well, you shouldn't have a problem with that. All right, we've got both of our things connected. Didn't even have to do anything to get this one connected. It just connected on its own. They're all firmware updated and now we can try it. Wow, look at that. We can check our connection quality, what interface we're on for a given device, which is cool. We can bind it to one of the specific access points, which is a nice touch. If you have like some security cameras that aren't very good about deciding what Wi-Fi thing they connect to, you can force it to connect with that. There's family settings, so you can block specific content for specific people. I made a thing for Bell that says he's a preschooler to block all of these various things for him. And you can even schedule the usage. And if you're outside of your scheduled you're allowed internet, you can even go and say reward with 60 minutes of additional internet access if you want. <laughs> uh, it's not something that I would use, but if, if that's a use case for you, that's it's there, you can, you can do it. The quick internet setup is probably just a redo of what we did in the initial setup where you just type in the Wi-Fi network names, but if we go into network here, we can be a little bit more choosy about of our options. Yeah, okay. Wi-Fi 7 mode is on, that's right. This is a Wi-Fi 7 access point. It supports 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and also has MLO, which in theory means you can have a, an individual device connect to multiple bands at the same time. So you can take advantage of 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz, assuming your device supports it, to increase your speeds, and in some cases, just increase um, the handling of clients, like the amount of clients you can handle. We can hide our SSID, we can isolate it to a given AP, and we can even see the clients that are connected to that individual network. I can add a guest network, huh, VPN network. Well, let's add a multi-link operation network. Okay, I've enabled MLO, which uh, has more than one benefit, actually. It allows not only our phone to connect over multiple bands, more importantly for this specific use case, it allows both of these to talk to each other over more than one or different bands at the same time. So say if you have a device that's like ripping on the five gigahertz because Wi-Fi, it's a bit of an oversimplification, but let's say you can only really have one device talking at a given time. Well, if you have one device using the five gigahertz band, then your two devices, in instead can go, ah, that band is really busy. Let me talk over six gigahertz or 2.4 so that it doesn't interrupt the downstream devices as much, which is cool, but it also means we can get faster Wi-Fi. Um, I'm not gonna start with that. Let's just start with normal, non-MLO. Let's try a speed test, just normal Wi-Fi, normie Wi-Fi. Yo, 1300, that's fast Wi-Fi, brother. That's like 1.1 gigabit without MLO, 1.2 even almost. And the upload, yo, 1500. Six gigahertz Wi-Fi kicks ass. It definitely kicks ass. Let's try MLO. To be clear, some devices don't make very good use of MLO and sometimes you can even get results that are worse. But this OnePlus 13, from my understanding, does usually do MLO pretty good. So let's see if we can go a little faster making use of both. Look at that, 2.2. So it's broadcasting and transmitting over both five gigahertz and six gigahertz at the same time. Holy sh balls. That's that's 3 3.2 gigabit upload. Now I say why don't we walk away from our little access point here. Let's walk over to the other set over there. We'll go pretty far away and see how it tests and then we'll take our second access point, put it over there and then try it with the mesh. So this is probably about 30 or so feet away. Oh yeah, we're still on MLO. Two gigabit that far away. Now we're probably more like 60, 70 feet away through a wall, still using MLO. Honestly, better than I was expecting. <laughs> 1300 down, 860 up. Let's go even further. It's bad, over here it's bad. We're far away. Let's go grab the other access point and see if it works more better. All right, we're back in the build corner. I've taken our second BT-10 and plugged it in here and got it all meshed up. Now let's go back over to where we were only getting like 90, 90 down, 90 up at C, if our speed is any better. So instead of over here getting 90 down and 90 up, now we're getting 800 down. Damn, boy. 
So clearly the Wi-Fi Wi-Fi is, but I wanna see what else they got in here. I did notice they have a VPN feature so you can connect to your different VPN providers if you wanna route devices through a VPN, like say if you have private internet access or something like that. But they also have something called VPN Fusion. So you can add like up to 16 different VPN profiles if you have different protocols or you use multiple providers. And then you can like, pick devices to use specific ones or even use multiple at the same time, which is kind of cool. They have their AI protection powered by Trend Micro allows real time network monitoring to detect malware, which I guess is kind of like an IPS kind of thing. Oh yeah, two-way IPS. That's enabled by default, assuming you agree to the privacy policy. They've got parental controls, security scans. They've got basically everything. Like the setup was pretty easy. All we had to do was type in our Wi-Fi name and password and an admin name and password and, and we were off to the races. You can make changes to all the advanced settings if you're a bit of a nerd, but if you also just wanted to set it up and have good Wi-Fi out of the box, it seems to do that with the eight internal antennas and 10 high power front end modules. You should be able to handle up to a 6,000 square foot space, but if you need more, you can add even more than they also sell a three pack of these things if you need, or just one if that's all you need as well. So if you're interested in the Asus Zen Wi-Fi BT10, you can pick up a single unit for 360 bucks, a two pack for 690, although I saw it on sale right there, or a three pack for, for a thousand. And then you can have Ballin, Wi-Fi 7, 4K Qualm, MLO, fast speeds all over your house, and you don't even need wiring. But if you do have wiring, you can use that too. So if you're interested in the BT10, one pack, two pack, three pack, or any of the other ASUS Zen Wi-Fi products, check out the link in the description. Uh, we'll have links to all of them down there. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, maybe hit the like button and um, thanks to ASUS for sponsoring. And let me know, do you have mesh Wi-Fi? Do you wish you had mesh Wi-Fi? Do you want better Wi-Fi?